Our journey as a parish community began only eight years ago, but we have a history rich in faith, commitment, and blessings. After many requests from Catholics in our area, Father Bill Marks was assigned to minister to the Catholics of Northeastern Dearborn County in January of 1999. I came not knowing what to do. I just came and the people were here. The people wanted a church, a people wanted a Catholic church here in their neighborhood and they did the work. And starting with 125 families, it just kept growing and growing because of the need and the desire for people to have a Catholic church. The first liturgies were held in homes until the community grew large enough to be scheduled at the Providence Presbyterian Church in Bright and at the banquet facility at the Tavern on the Lake at Hidden Valley. The first Good Friday Mass was held at the Old Bright Firehouse. By the end of the first year, we received permission to celebrate Mass at Bright Elementary School. Our first fall festival was held that year at the Knights of Columbus in Harrison. In January of 2000, the Archbishop installed Father Bill as pastor and placed a new parish under the patronage of St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. Later that year, we were blessed with a donation from the Gavin family of 20 acres of land on Salt Fork Road. The property included a large steel building that with the vision and commitment of hundreds of parish volunteers was transformed into the manger church. By September 2001, St. Teresa Benedicta of the Cross had a home of its own. The parish rectory was also on the original site, and office space was rented nearby in Bright. By 2005, our young parish was thriving with over 750 families, and it was clear we needed more space. The 23 acres of land adjoining our original site was then purchased, which included a home for the rectory and another steel building. A plan was devised to remodel the existing rectory for on-site office space and the growing religious education program. Thanks to the many talented and devoted parishioners, we were able to complete the project by August 2006, and Father Bill moved to the new rectory. I think it's amazing that we have built what we have done. I actually sat on the building committee to convert the old rectory into the offices. So I seen it firsthand, watching the volunteers turn that house into meeting space and offices. <laughs> um, and for them to do that all volunteer was, it's just amazing that we have that ability in this parish. Looking back over the last eight years, many things are clear. The formation of our parish has been very successful. This success has been due largely to the spirit of stewardship that we have embraced through our gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Countless donations and thousands of volunteer hours stand as a model of our stewardship philosophy. We have given freely and received many blessings. I can't imagine our parish without stewardship. It's such an integral piece of who we are as community and who we are as a parish family. When people give freely, it's amazing what the Spirit can do with that. And that's the real challenge over and over again of any parish, is to realize we have to be stewards of faith, we have to be stewards of blessing, we have to be stewards of love. Give of our hearts, give of our time, give of our talents, give of our treasures. And when we do that, the Spirit is so alive and so able to do so many, many, many things. In Christ's name. We celebrated our first Mass in the Manger Church on September 16, 2001, following the tragedy of 9 11. We came to Mass in need and were comforted and united by our love for Christ. We left our new church with renewed hope. With hope, we have created outreach programs for others in need and have become the beacon on the hill. All of us have come from other parishes and believe that what we have at St. Teresa is unique, something we can't find anywhere else. I love our parish. Um, I had a real hard time for a while with the Catholic Church, and when I started coming back to St. Teresa's, I really enjoy it now again. 
Um, it's a great church. Everybody is very open and welcoming here, which I think is a great thing because I do visit other churches from time to time for different things. And it's amazing the welcomeness you have at St. Teresa compared to some of the other churches around. As the number of families have grown, we have been able to identify our needs as a parish and meet them head on. We are established and thriving and eager for the next stage in our development. We are blessed with parishioners who have always been able to recognize our blessing and embrace sacrifice in an effort to meet our growing needs. What amazes me is when visitors come to St. Teresa and they celebrate Mass with us, they walk out and they all say a similar thing like, it's such a lively spirit here, it's such a welcoming spirit here, it's such a positive experience here. And when you hear those words as a pastor, you realize that many people have given a lot of their spirit for that to happen. And the grace in that is that we have been blessed over and over again with people having the ability and taking the risk to truly give their spirit. And that is why St. Teresa has succeeded. Without our own Catholic school, many of our families rely on our religious education programs for spiritual growth and development. I cannot imagine a more inviting and welcoming community than we experience here week after week at St. Teresa Benedicta Parish. The new families coming in, I hear all the time from parents who call asking about religious education, that they feel at home here, a feeling that they haven't felt in the past anywhere else. That's a blessing that we really need to embrace and hold on to. In the name of the Father, the Son. Our dedicated teachers and parents have endured the limitations of our facilities, trusting that in time, we would better meet the needs of our students. Our new office has rooms that serve as classrooms several nights a week. Many families come to the office several evenings every week for these programs. Truly the biggest struggle that our families have presently in embracing our religious education programs is the fact that they are, the scheduling is across three various days at various times. My daughter has religious ed on Monday. My son has religious ed on Wednesday. We lived in Bright up until three years ago. We moved to Guilford, so now I'm 15 minutes away from church. I would love to see a large meeting space that I could come teach religious ed and my children could be with me and they could go to their classrooms and take it all at the same time. That way it would be more of a commitment from everybody in the parish. I think more people would be using the classroom religious education if it was on one night that they knew it was a particular night, it was a particular time. That way they wouldn't have to scatter their schedules. I only have two children. I can't imagine what it's like for parents that have three and four children that have to come several nights a week. As the number of families continues to grow, we can predict the changing need of this program. The steel building on the newly acquired property can meet these and other needs. It's a hope of ours that the renovation of the building will bring the religious education scheduling down to one day. There are various options presented to us and literally our numbers will play that out. A large fellowship area is also critical. The youth, I'm really excited for our parish youth when I think about this building. Um, we have an awesome group of young people in our parish and teenagers quite frankly need a space that's more conducive to where they are at in life to come together for social activities, allow them to come together with their Catholic peers and to build friendships that are rooted in God's love and the love for one another in a space that is conducive to who they are and what they want to be doing. At the same time we're creating a building that's able to bring all ages together if that's for a spaghetti dinner, if that's for a chicken dinner, if that's for a dance for the youth and also I'm hearing over and over again that a place for the seniors to come to get together, to have a space they can call their own. We have all the possibilities of bringing those things together as a community. The success of the Legacy for Our Mission campaign will dictate how many more needs can be met if we exceed our goal. My hope and my heart's in a Catholic latchkey because I truly believe that we have to pass on our faith. And in people's busy lives, in this busy world, 
if we can create a space where we can give children security, help them with their homework, teach them about the Catholic faith, have a Mass weekly, it's just planting seeds and powerful seeds and we don't know where those seeds are going to go. And so to have a Catholic latchkey is opening doors for those families, for those children, and for this parish. And if we get the money to be able to do a preschool, we're starting at an even a younger age to show them who Christ is, to show them the Catholic Church, and to show them what it is to be community. And so at that younger age, we have all this possibility to pass on the faith. When we consider our plan for the steel building, we need to remember what wonderful things have come from the manger church, our original modified spirit-filled steel building. And as we look at taking another steel building and renovating it into a multi-task building, we're saying to the parish, look at all the possibilities there are. Look at all we wanna do. And please be a part of it once again. I don't feel bad being able to ask people to be part of the next step because I believe many, many people want to be part of the next step. And I truly believe in my heart and I truly believe in faith that they're going to do it, that they will have the ability to come forward and to give of their hearts and to give of themselves. In 1999, a commitment was made by the Archdiocese, Father Bill, and our founding parishioners to establish St. Teresa Benedict of the Cross Parish. Through the years, a steadfast dedication from our parishioners has allowed us to grow and keep up with the needs surrounding that growth. Now, it is time for us to make another commitment to ensure our parish continues to thrive. The Archdiocesan Capital Campaign is called Legacy for Mission. Each parish has been given a goal, a benchmark, based on a formula. Our goal is 742,000 750. We need to exceed that goal if we truly want to build what we need to build here. And I know that's asking a lot of this parish and a lot of each of us, but we truly have to do that to make that building real. And once again, whenever we're asked and we give freely, it will happen. Not in our way, not in our time, but in the spirits. And so once again, please truly consider what you can give to the Archdiocese and to our parish.